Hi, everybody. As you hopefully know by now, I am Michael Listener, the executive director and one of the co-founders of Free Law Project. Uh, hopefully by now, you know a bit about what we do there too. I am really sorry I can't be there today. Um, I really did try, but at least this way I can be there in spirit. And you know, I went to the School of Information at Berkeley and before it was the uh, School of Information, it was previously the Library Sciences School. So I love a good librarian crowd. I'm super disappointed not to be there today. But since I can't be there to hand out stickers and business cards and contact info and all that, uh, I just want to say at the outset that I love talking about this stuff, and I'd be very pleased to chat with the folks in this crowd. Send me an email if you find any of this interesting. I'd love to hear from you. So um, with that said, I am going to make myself a little smaller. I'm going to show the slides again. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how and why folks build data sets with Pacer. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to tuck myself away in the corner over here so you can see the slides. And at, at Free Law Project, I talk to people all day that are building new and innovative tools with Pacer data. Um, these folks are running the gamut from literal teenagers that I talk to sometimes, they're living in their parents' attic. Um, and they see value in the data. And, and sometimes it runs the gamut to legal tech veterans and um, titans in the space uh, that really do, they, they know legal data inside out. Um, but what all these people have in common is a recognition that PACER data and PACER information, federal court data is powerful. So what do they do with this data? There are a lot of things. And I tried to come up with sort of the top couple here. Um, and you can see them on, on the slide here. So, you know, lately I've been talking to a lot of people about AI. I think we all have, if you look at the conference schedule, it's AI, left, right, center, top and bottom. Um, but as it relates to the PACER data, um, people are using it to train um, large language models. Um, so we have a partnership, for example, with OpenAI. Um, people are using it for fine-tuning models for chat systems and search engines. People are using AI or machine learning or even just basic statistics uh, to learn about legal trends. For example, is a law being used more over time? Or is a law being used more in a particular jurisdiction? A while back, uh, there was an attorney in Florida that found a particular law where, where uh, they could make money. Um, and what do you know? They started making a lot of money. They started bringing a lot of cases. And um, pretty quickly, uh, it spread outside of Florida, you know, started going north, right? Um, and we learned this from the data. Um, an empirical researcher pulled the data. Another question. Uh, how are particular judges responded to particular types of motions? Um, this gets into the judicial analytics area, right? Um, can you look at a particular judge and say, ah, um, I could ask my colleague who has, you know, had that judge once or twice. I could ask my colleague how that judge rules on a couple of, you know, motions to dismiss um, that they had, right? Um, or using PACER data, I can go and I can look at a thousand motions to dismiss that that judge has uh, responded to. So that's the kind of thing that you can do. Um, another area, litigation finance. Um, this is an interesting one, right? And this is where pe people will use, and organizations really, use PACER data uh, to identify parties. Uh, and in particular, they look for parties that would win a case if they had financial support. Um, but you know, setting aside all this fancy stuff, a lot of firms, especially small ones, large ones, they just want PACER data so they can Put it in their CMS, um, publish on a website, um, automate some workflow. All these sorts of basic, simple stuff um, is a reason that people are gathering PACER data, PACER data and that we're talking to people. Um, there's a million things you can do with it. Some are trivial, um, some are wildly sophisticated, but almost all play a role in enhancing the judicial system. So, if you're interested in gathering PACER data and building a data set, you've got a few places you can begin. Um, Rebecca already talked about third-party assistance. Uh, the other places I want to begin with um, 
are the FJC database, which I'll talk about next, um, Jira Scraper, and the Court Listener Fetch API. So let's go through this. So the FJC integrated database is a really, really powerful um, source of data, and most people don't know it exists. So what is the FJC data? Um, first, what's the FJC? Um, just a word on that. If you haven't heard of the FJC, uh, they are the Federal Judicial Center. Um, they have essentially, as, my, as I understand it, two roles uh, in the federal judiciary. One is training new judges, right? Um, everybody needs training when they take on a new job. Judges are no different. Um, and the Federal Judicial Center does a lot of that. Um, the other thing they do is statistics. Um, so if you've ever looked at caseload statistics, um, that's coming from them. Um, if you ever look at, you know, they have these occasional announcements that, you know, bankruptcy's up X percent or down Y percent. That's the Federal Judicial Center that's cranking out those numbers. Um, and I should note, they use a lot of contractors also. So maybe it's a contractor working with the FJC. Um, but setting that aside, one of my favorite things they do um, is they create what's called the IDB the integrated database. And the integrated database uh, is a bulk data file about bankruptcy cases, criminal cases, civil cases, appellate cases, um, all those kinds of data you can see you know, kind of underneath my face there. Um, and it has bulk data. It's huge, wonderful CSVs. Um, these are published by the courts. They're on a quarterly basis. And they have columns for all kinds of things you can't usually query for PACER itself. Um, you know, it's things like um, nature of suit, court, pro se status, county, um, what title the lawsuit was brought under, all kinds of different fields are in there. Um, but th really, the most important thing about these CSVs is they're basically complete. Um, you know, they might be a few months out of date, but They've got basically all of the data um, and they go back quite a ways. So if you're thinking about building a PACER data set, one of the first steps you're gonna say is like, what are all the cases that I'm interested in? What are the documents from those cases I'm interested in? And the place to answer that question is the FJC. You pull the CSV, you filter it down. You may even need um, a programmer to help with that because these are very large CSVs. A lot of um, you know Microsoft Excel might not even be able to open the darn things. They're huge. Uh, but that's where you're going to start your project in uh, nine out of 10 cases. So uh, they're really cool. And there's even a website that FJC hosts. Um, you can go to it, just look it up, Google it, FJC IDB. Um, you can poke around, you can do queries, you can filter to subsets of the data. I like to use that for sort of scoping a project. If somebody says, um, you know, Mike, I'm really interested in patent law. I want to buy all the patent cases. Um, I'm going to get those from Pacer and, uh, let's, let's do it. I'll say, great, let's go to the IDB. We're going to look things up there. Um, and pretty quickly you can filter down nature of suit is patent. How many cases are there? Well, each one costs about a dollar, let's say. So if there's hundred thousand cases, you want to buy that from Pacer, you're going to need a hundred thousand dollars. Um, it gets expensive fast, um, but you can filter in other ways, you know, patent cases from the last five years or whatever, right? Um, so it's really cool. Uh, and I, and I think I've, I've made that point, but, um, I do want to say that it's not perfect. Um, first of all, it's made by the federal judiciary and that means that they have to follow an official policy that was passed in March, 1995, uh, and then passed a second time in 2003, um, that says that judge names should never be released in aggregate data sources. So because they control access to their own information, they have decided that, uh, you know, although the judge field is, you know, ostensibly there in PACER, uh, it does not get released into the IDB. And in fact, when you open it up in Microsoft Excel, you'll see this column for the judge. It's going to be blank. I'm really sorry. I've tried to push back on it. I've not made the progress. I don't expect anybody else will. Maybe someday. Um, so that's problem number one. Problem number two, uh, case names are truncated to 32 characters. Don't ask me why, I don't know why, um, but you can still get you know most of the case name. Uh, the data only has the docket numbers, which 
can be repetitive, especially in criminal cases. Um, so there's some problems there about actually finding the right case once you're mapping this over to Baser and 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 it, it's not perfect, um, but it's very good. And we have a fact sheet about it um, at that link you see on the slide. Um, so it's free.law slash IVB facts. Um, and if you can't get that URL before I change slides, just find it in the footer of free.law. Uh, it's there too. We have a couple other fact sheets with it. So that gives you uh, a pretty great source of what the data is. And now let's assume we have a list of cases we want to get. So what's next? Well, from here, we have a few choices. Um, I'm going to start at sort of the lowest, most technical level, and I'm going to move up from there. At the lowest level, if you're a programmer or if you have one at your disposal, you can use our Python library, which is called Jira Scraper, um, and you can go and get the data yourself. Um, this is a good solution if you know what you're doing. And you know, if you really want to get good at scraping phaser data, Jira Scraper is probably the best way to do it. Um, we've been working on it for a decade. Uh, it's maintained by us, it's robust, it's battle tested. Uh, we've used it to download tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of items. It's cool. Um, but maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you, your eyes are glazing over. Uh, you're saying, Mike, you're nuts. Uh, we're a bunch of librarians. What are you thinking? Uh, we don't have programmers. Just got our back and call. Give me another option. Okay, let's do that. So if that's where you're at, um, the next thing you can do is what's called a fetch API. And honestly, you're still going to need a programmer for this, but it's getting easier. So instead of writing code and you know telling what to fetch from Pacer and things like that, um, we took the complexity of Jira Scraper and we bundled it into a simple API uh, that uses our infrastructure to gather data. So the way it works, um, your computer, or your laptop, tells our computer what to buy. It says, go buy document 22 from case XYZ, right? Um, our computer will go out, buy that document, um, and then we'll tell your computer when it's done. We'll say, aha, here's your document, right? Of course, this uses your PACER credentials. Somebody has to pay the bill. Um, but once, the, once this is complete, the data is in court listener, which is pretty cool because then everybody can access it, not just you. Um, and you know, we've once again used sort of our crowdsourcing approach here. Um, you don't have to do too much programming. So still, you had to do a little. Uh, and for some in the crowd, your eyes are now completely glazed over. Uh, you think I'm not talking to you. Um, and you're like, I don't have a programmer. Give me another option. Great. If that's you, there is another option. Uh, and it goes like this. We will do the work for you. Uh, give us a call, write me an email. Um, we'll do sort of a call gathering your needs and then we'll do it as a service. Um, this is a great option if you have the funding, you get the data you need as a zip, you avoid thinking about scraping almost completely. Uh, anything you buy as part of the process gets added to Portless Snare, so everybody benefits. Cool, right? Um, so those are some ways you can figure out the cases to get, the ways you can get the data itself. Um, next, I want to jump forward a little bit and talk about advocacy. So how are we going to free Pacer? Because I think we've spent a lot of time so far talking about what Pacer is, tools for searching it, some of its history, a lot of other things. Um, we have a few slides coming up after this, teaching about talking about teaching strategies. And honestly, we wanted this advocacy section to come last so we could leave on this like big, you know, let's go do it kind of moment. Um, but because I'm only doing one video, this is my point. So we're going to move this forward. Um, so that way you only get one video from me. So we've explained how Pacer makes something around $150 million a year by selling court documents to the public. We have learned how Pacer fees hinder and block innovation in the legal sector. We've heard about how Pacer fees make it practically impossible, even with fee waivers, uh, to research and analyze the legal system. And there's more. Um, what we haven't mentioned so far is that after eight years, we are nearing the end of a class action lawsuit where the judiciary has pretty much agreed that, one, 
the fees they charge are illegally high. Two, they need to reimburse people for those fees. So that's great. If you were a Pacer user during the class period, you can look for a check sometime soon. Cool, right? But they didn't change their fees. So anybody can relaunch the 2016 case today uh, and they can win again today. Um, hopefully it'll take fewer than eight years. Uh, so I think that establishes, uh, even though it's a settlement, that they're operating illegally or at the very least they're willing to pay people off um, rather than you know fight that one to the death. So that's a problem. Um, and beyond all this, I also want to reiterate that we have Jonah here, uh, well, there with you. Um, he's an expert on this stuff. He has written papers on it, and he's going to pick up where I leave off in a second. <clears throat> so um, I want to talk about how we're tackling this with legislation, because this situation is not good uh, for America. It's not good for justice. It's not good for technology, innovation, research, any of these things, even the courts. Um, and this is an important point. The courts struggle to study and understand themselves. They have blocked out outside researchers um, with this little fee waiver exception um, so that there's very little research about what's going on inside the courts. Um, they don't even have the transparency they should. And that's because of the fees. So for several years, we've been working on the Open Courts Act. Um, it's pretty basic. It creates a brand new modern PACER system um, the system is largely free. There's still some like, you know, if you're a big data aggregator with high needs for speed, uh, if that's you, you're going to pay a fee. Um, but other than that, it's going to be free to journalists, it'll be free to nonprofits, um, free to people who don't need things in like, you know, super high frequency, super big amounts, um, huge step forward. Um, and at various times, versions of this bill have passed through various parts of Congress. I'll spare you those details. Um, most of the time when it has passed through a committee or various parts of Congress, it's been unanimous. It's bipartisan, right? Everybody agrees this is a problem. Even at this point, the judiciary agrees it's a problem. They fought us tooth and nail to say, no, 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 everybody loves PACER. Finally, they've admitted PACER's insecure and needs to be replaced. Um, and we even managed to make the bill cost neutral, uh, which might blow your mind, right? Uh, PACER is bringing in $150 million a year. Uh, the bill calls for making a new system. Um, but we had to satisfy the budget hawks. Uh, and they said, if it adds $1 to the deficit, we will not do it. So uh, the bottom line is the new system will be so much more efficient. It'll just basically pay for itself. Um, so it's a great bill. Um, but PACER doesn't have a lobbyist. Uh, and we're faced with one of the least productive Congresses in history. So um, although it's strong, we are faced with really tough Congress in an election year. And the momentum is against us, but we are going to keep pushing. And one day soon, uh, PACER will be free. So with that, I'll bring my remarks to a close. Uh, and I'll hand things off to Jonah, who can tell you a bit more about the case for free PACER. Um, and once again, I'll just share, I love talking about this stuff. So thank you for listening. Uh, sorry for not being there in person, and I hope you'll get in touch if you have any follow-up questions, opportunities, ideas, any of that stuff. Love to hear from you. Thank you.